pretty hot in this country, isn't it? I'm only here, just about, because I've just recently taken possession of the summariest of decks that is just ideal for this most summary of summers that we seem to be having this year. I'm not sure I'm even going to last through this, but we'll give it a go. It's so hot. And of course, I can't shut the curtains or anything because then I won't have any light. And you're going to need light because you want to see this one. This is really, this is a colorful one. And I do like my colors. Um, and special thank you to uh, Celestial Fairy Cassandra because Cassandra very kindly um, offered to let me have uh, first pick of some of the decks that she was getting rid of. She mentioned in a, in a video recently that she was getting rid of some decks and I, oh, I'd really like to have one of her decks because I love Cassandra. She's a sweetie. Um, so I contacted her and said, well, I didn't, I just accept a comment to go, um, where are you selling these decks? And she said, oh, she said, I haven't done so yet. She said, but I'll send you a list. And she did. And interestingly, um, of all the decks that were on there, and there were quite a few, someone like me, um, I only had one of them. And that one is one that I'm selling as well, or will be selling. Um, and there was only one on there that I wanted. And mm, that was an interesting story as well. It's one that had been on my radar for a while. And I liked it. And I thought, yeah, I can, I can, I'll get that. That'll be nice. Um, but no, yeah, no, not yet. Not yet. Um, and then something else would come up that was a bargain. And I you know, had to get that right now while it was a bargain. And then something, you know, and it's just, it just kept getting bumped back down the list. Um, and there I was on our list and I thought, oh, perfect. This is what was meant to happen. I was supposed to have Cassandra's deck. And when I got it, I did a little bit of looking on the internet to see what else I could find out about it. And I found a video of Cassandra's where she had gotten this deck and uh, flashed cards of it. And and that was the first I'd seen of it because I commented at the time. I said, oh, great. I've got another deck on my wish list. Thank you very much for that. So it's quite ironic, actually. I ended up with it <laughs> through her through her first video in the first place. So it is, without further ado, the Langustal Tarot. I'm going to be, yeah, just trying to get going here. Colourful. Didn't, didn't I say colourful? Um, Self-published, as it says, Fernand Langustal. Uh, Germany, that's the back of the box. And I'm pondering now why he chose to put those particular cards on the back, but they look nice together, I guess. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. It is a big deck. I mean, that's my hands. I'm, I can't even get my hands around the deck. If I tried to shuffle, that's all I can pick up at one time in my hands. So this is a definite overhander, this one. Yeah, there we go. But it's it's a lovely smooth deck. It shuffles beautifully. You know, just have to be a little bit careful because, of course, it wants to splay out the sides a bit. But that's the backs. I quite like those. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Bit. And, and then you can see what I mean about colour. Now, that is the King of Wands. Now, it's a very fiery red. I'll try and do this. I'm not quite sure the best way to do this. So you can see, I think, obviously, trying to hold a deck isn't going to work. Um, so I'll just pull out some cards. Actually, before I go too far into flashing the cards, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the little white book. Comes, And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because this deck is still available. You can get it from Tarot BG, um, and it's not expensive, or you can get it directly from Langustal on eBay. Now, the listing the last time I looked says only two left, but I suspect that's just, you know, he puts you know, 10 or 20 on at a time, and then when they all go down, then he relists it. I'm hoping that's not really true. Um, but anyway, so you've got a book that's half in German and half in English, and you've got about 16 pages. It uh, starts with, uh, what is the origin of tarot? How does tarot work? Uh, what can tarot do? Blah, blah, blah. And it mentions a little bit about the artist, so I will, I'll just read that. It says, Stefan Lange, alias Langustel, was born in 1964. He is a sculptor, carpenter, therapist, and musician. Notice it doesn't mention painter, so you just did it. He has worked with tarot and tarot symbolism for 20 years. He started designing this tarot deck in 2006. The deck is characterized by strong, simple symbols, a style he also uses in his other paintings. So he does paint. Uh, strong contrasts, intense colors, and a simple mode of representation make the images emotionally available to the viewer's inner child. 
Languista lives and works at Lake Constance in Germany. Further information about the artist is available on his homepage, www.langustel.de. Um, and it's a good thing too, because when you get into the book, it's very basic, you know, typical tarot keywords, meanings. Um, I haven't seen anything in there too different at this point. Um, but if you go to his website, and you go to the tarot page, and you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find a very innocuous little link that just says card descriptions, all in lowercase. I nearly missed it, but when you click on it, it downloads a PDF in German and English that actually goes into his reasoning behind the images, what he chose, why he chose it, what colors he chose, and blah, blah, which is very handy. So I hived out the English bit of that, and I copied it into a document, and I left myself some space to make some notes in between each one. And um, and that's the kind of thing I really like. You know, I'm, uh, I have my meanings. I don't, you know, unless he goes right off, you know, on a tangent, I don't really need to know that. So I'm going to, as an example, start with the fool. There you go. There's your fool. And you can see the, you know, a little bit of the, the fool's hat there. And, and you can't, you can't really, that is the fool. You know, you'd see, you'd see it. But I just, I love all the colors in that and the intensity and that just, you know, the whole thing just seems to hum. I love it. Anyway, I'll read what it says. Let me see if I can leave that up there without moving around too much. Uh, the bright colors symbolize many possibilities. The fool is holding the pilgrim's staff in his hand. Water and fish indicate openness and vivacity. The butterflies, you see those little butterflies at the top? These weird angular butterflies. They're in loads of the cards. Anyway, the butterflies also indicate different ideas and a joy of living. The golden yellow background gives the scene energy of life. One can see the tip of the fool's cap, the cross, or rather the handle of the sword in the background, and when you see the other swords, you know, it's recognizable, gives an awareness of danger which is lurking along the path the fool is going to take. So, well, you know, it's good to know. Nothing too earth-shattering in that one. Um, one of the things I noticed Ah, yes, because there's another little note here that I picked up from the website, and he says the illustrations are based on the influences of the Waitsmith and the Crowley-Harris tarot, as well as my own thoughts and ideas. Now, I love the fact that he refers to them as the Waitsmith and the Crowley-Harris tarot. Probably, as a creator and artist, he feels that, you know, give credit where credit is due, and he doesn't call it the tote or, or the rider weight deck. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was quite sweet. But I've looked at the cards somewhat, and the only card I can really see any tote, I'm going to call it tote, influence, is the Hierophant. That's his, that's, I brought that up for a side-by-side -side comparison. It's really just that star on the Hierophant's chest um, that seems to have sort of taken over the picture there. But you lose the usual uh, Christian symbolism Hierophant priest that puts a lot of people off. Um, and going through this deck, it looks like all the Christian symbolism is missing, is just not, not present. Um, so that might be appealing to some people who have difficulties with that, who have difficulties with decks that are full of all this Christian symbolism. Um, for instance, I have like the Judgment card. Okay, you've still got Gabriel's horn there. And you have what's intended to be a representation of the eye of God and what could be considered abstract angel wings around it, if you kind of squint it hard. Um, but still, not too bad. Um, the, the world has lost its four evangelists from around the corner and now just has um, uh, the, the four suit symbols around the edge. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, so that might appeal to some people as well. Um, I'm going to actually read you what it says about the Hierophant, because that's quite nice. Uh, I can find you where I've gone. Oh, top of the page. That's where I couldn't, couldn't see it for looking. Where have I put the card now? Okay, right, let's do this again. Um, no. <laughs> Wrong page. Put it down. Uh, the pentahedral star. Pentahedral star? In the picture shows how the four elements, which appear in the four lower rays, come into contract, con <coughs> contact with spiritualism. This is represented in the uppermost point by God's eye, in the iris of which the wheel of fortune is alluded to. This one, that's right. 
the violet background underlines the principle of spiritualism. I don't think he quite means spiritualism, but it's, it's a bit of a bit of a hinky translation of some of this. The labyrinth in the middle of the star points to the search for meaning, which by way of the heart is also a search for the center. The two hands at the top represent the obvious exoteric and the concealed esoteric. The praying hands at the bottom symbolize the pupil. So that's you know, that's quite nice. I like that. Um, let's see, what else? This is another thing I, I kind of... Ah, oh, yes, speaking of non-churchy symbolism, the five of coins does not include a church in the background. It now contains a rather self-satisfied-looking rich man, safely ensconced on his side of the wall, and a poor fingerless beggar <laughs> hobbling his way um, outside of that wall of comfort, um, followed by, which I thought was quite sweet, the rich man um, giving a coin, giving sustenance, and and notice the, the flowing water, that sort of emotional connection that he's making with this person outside of the wall. So he's actually making that connection on a, on a deep spiritual level as well as a financial material level, which I thought was lovely. And also the candle now has a nice glow around it, whereas before it, oh, it just, well, it was there. It was glowing, but it was a little bit feeble. So I thought that was quite sweet. That was a nice little twist on it. Um, yeah. Actually, I mean, I've shown you a fair few of the cards now, and I don't really want to show you every single one. That's nice. With lots of these big purple eyes. Um, and, and lots of fish. Lots of fish in the cards, so lots of, you know, uh, emotional, spiritual stuff. That's, I find that a very interesting, uh, in this case, Prince of Swords. Um, yeah, the colours in that. Very, and you will find that, you know, the swords tend to be bluish, cooler shades. The the uh, wands, a lot of the time, are are quite red. And I looked at this first, I'm like, oh, she's missing her cat. But she's not missing her cat. There it is in sort of like a little shadow in, in the background there, the little cap. So good, that's good. So you can see it's really is very, very weight smithy. You know, you recognize most of the cards. The hermit's a bit of an odd one because you you don't actually see the hermit, you see his little his little hermitage. So so uh, yeah. yeah. I really, really enjoy this deck. Um, I love the colours in it. <laughs> no, there you go. There is it. King of Cups, the ultimate romantic, as you can tell from that card. Oh, that's another interesting thing as well. Um, it goes princess, prince, king, queen in in his way of, of seeing things. No explanation as to why, but yeah, whatever. It's kind of cool. So the whole wand series is quite interesting. If you do, you know, if you ever get this deck, or if you just go to his website, sorry, I keep looking at the wrong place of the camera, if you go to his website and just read the information about it, that's quite interesting, quite interesting aspects to it. But yeah, I just, oh, here we go. Interesting high priestess, yeah, recognizable, pillars, moons, pomegranates, so... Yeah, I like it. I really, I just, it's not even, I like it. I really, really like it. I'm just, I'm loving it. You know, the colours are just so much fun and I can't wait to start using it. I haven't really been because I've been, been working with, um, funny enough, another holy grail of mine that I finally got. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll, you'll see which deck I'm talking about. I've wanted that deck for a long time and I finally <laughs> broke down and got it because it wasn't, wasn't the cheapest deck going. Um, but that turned out to come from somebody I knew as well from um, from the inter interwebs, as they say. Um, but it wasn't until I got the receipt, the PayPal receipts, I bought it on eBay, and I saw the name on it, and I go, I know that person. <laughs> so I went and, and told him, I said, you know, now that you got all that money out of me, I hope you spend it wisely. <laughs> but I, I love that day. But I am kind of working a lot with that at the moment. I'm doing the within without advice thing again from you know, Patrick and, and Kelly. Uh, from the Truth in Story. Uh, not consistently, not every day, but I am doing it and I'm using that deck for it. But um, now that I've actually finally recorded this video, and oh my god, I've been talking for nearly 15 minutes and my nose is starting to drip. It's too hot in this country, I can't go. Um, I'm going to start flashing a few of these on there as well. But I just had to, had to stop and say thank you to Cassandra for being a sweetie and letting me have 
first dibs at the at her list. And oh, and she sent me a, a little a little moonstone as well to go with it, which is really sweet. So I brought that up here to show and tell as well. So I'm really pleased. Wanted to share, especially because it is a deck that you can still get. So if that crazy color scheme appeals to you, go for it. Go for it. Get it now. Anyway, <sighs> that's it. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go soak my feet in a bowl of ice water, I think. And, oh, I don't know. It's just, I can't, I can't be doing with this. <sighs> I hope you're all coping better than I am. <laughs> it looked earlier like it was going to rain, and now it's all lovely and sunny again. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love the sunshine, but I just, I can't do the heat. I'm just not, I'm not equipped for it. Anyway, anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely summer. I hope you all continue to have a lovely summer. I'm still around, though you don't see very much of me. I'm watching you all. Love you all. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.